What do Drowsy and Masharna from Pokemon, Tapirmon from Digimon, and Baguska from Yu-Gi-Oh! all have in common? The designs were all at least in part inspired by the real-world animal, the tapir. Tapir are a large quadrupedal species of mammal with four extant or living members of their family. These include the Baird's tapir, the South American tapir, also called the Brazilian or lowland tapir, the mountain tapir, and debatably the most famous of the group called the Malayan tapir, also known as the Oriental or Indian tapir. The most distinguishing feature of these majestic animals of course has to be their specially adapted proboscis, which can resemble in a lot of ways an elephant's trunk and actually shares a few similar uses. While not quite as powerful as an elephant, the tapir snout is still exceptional for smelling and can even be used to help the animal reach food that would otherwise be out of reach or as a snorkel while in the water. These animals are excellent swimmers and spend plenty of time in and around the waterways of their respective habitats. Tapir are something called an ungulate, which is a fancy way of saying they're an animal with hooves. Specifically, they're an odd-toed ungulate, referring to the fact that they have three hooved toes on their back feet. This means their closest living relative are going to be other odd-toed ungulates, most famously horses and zebras, who have a single hooved toe, and rhinos, who share the tapir's three. However, Tapir are unique amongst their cousins as they hold the distinction of the only odd-toed ungulate with three toes on their back feet, but four on their front. Tapir are herbivores, which means their diet is going to exclusively feature lots of fruits and veggies. Tapir are what's known as an opportunistic feeder, which basically just means they aren't very picky. They're browsers, like giraffes, eating shrubs, leaves, and twigs. Grazers, like horses, using incisor teeth to eat different types of grasses, and also frugivores, eating a variety of fruits and berries. Tapir have even been known to cruise around the bottom of rivers, similar to African hippos, often feeding on marine vegetation and aquatic plants. Tapir tend to inhabit rainforested regions in South and Central America, plus some areas of India and Asia. For the longest time, tapirs were thought to be a fairly solitary animal, but recent studies show they may occasionally forage for food and socialize in small groups. And, worth mentioning, they have some of the cutest babies in the entire animal kingdom. All juvenile tapirs share similar spots and stripes, making them look like adorable little watermelons. These babies grow surprisingly quick, reaching full size in around a year and a half after birth with the mothers being pregnant for around 18 months on average. Most tapirs will reach full sexual maturity around the age of 2 to 4 years and have been known to live between 25 and 30 years, a range pretty similar to their rhino cousins. While I think most people would agree tapir are pretty adorable animals, every now and then you might notice them making a face like this, which might make you think twice about how cuddly they actually are. But don't worry too much. What you're seeing is actually something called a Fleeman's response, a German term which means to bare teeth. This is actually an action you'll find a surprising number of mammals perform, including very well-known pets such as cats and horses. If you've ever seen your cat make this action at home, all this really is is a display of particular interest in something. Many mammals have a special scent gland in their mouth called a Jacobson's organ. By curling the lips back, baring their teeth, and inhaling, they pay extra special attention to whatever it is that's interested them. Tapir, in particular, can use the Fleeman's response to investigate their surroundings and find potential mates. So, how do tapirs relate to gaming? Well, across the majority of the media they appear in, creatures and monsters that draw inspiration from the tapir often share some surprising similarities outside of appearance. Always present, of course, is that awesome proboscis, but oddly enough, they all also share a common theme centered around sleep and dreams. Drowsy and its evolution Hypno, as well as Masharna and its pre-evolution Muna, are a series of Pokemon that are oddly similar, actually. Both evolutionary lines are pure psychic types, with Drowsy and Hypno famously being the Dream Eater Pokemon, and newer additions Muna and Masharna being given extremely similar lore, with Masharna's Pokedex entry in Pokemon Black even calling out that the mist coming from its head is comprised of the dreams of other people and Pokemon. 
These themes continue into other media, with Tapirmon appearing in the Digimon franchise. While the lore in Digimon can be a bit harder to come by, the entries that do exist share similar stories to its Pokemon cousins, claiming that it uses REM sleep in humans, the part of our sleep cycle during which dreams occur, as nourishment, and that it's actually been known to dispel particularly bad dreams. Even in Yu-Gi-Oh, we have the monster known as Number 41, Baguska, the terribly tired tapir. Lore in Yu-Gi-Oh is even harder to find than Digimon, but even still, the visual and gameplay storytelling on this card still focus heavily on the same theme of sleep, with the artwork depicting it passed out, and its in-play effect forcing all monsters on the field into defense position, as long as it stays in that position itself, stimulating putting the entire field to sleep. So, what's the deal? Well, it turns out, in Japanese folklore, there exists a supernatural being called the Baku. Baku are spirit creatures with the general appearance of a tapir, including their trademark snout, that are said to devour nightmares. The inspiration between these monsters and tapir representation in all sorts of media is pretty clear, but interestingly enough, despite the positive role of the Nightmare Eater, in mythology, these creatures are not entirely benevolent. In fact, it's warned that these creatures be summoned with caution, as the Baku may not be satisfied with your bad dreams and could also indulge itself with your hopes and aspirations. Funny enough, Tapirmon's Japanese name is actually Bakumon. Tapirmon in particular has a design that leans heavily into the Baku inspiration, lacking back feet and instead having a swirling gray cloud of smoke on the lower half of its body. Tapirmon is actually considered a holy Digimon due to the ring around its front leg. However, Tapirmon's dark primary attack is called Nightmare Syndrome, an attack which projects the negative dreams it's consumed onto the opponent, resulting in nightmarish visions and hallucinations. Even in the much happier Pokemon franchise, the very first appearance of Tapir-inspired Pokemon Drowsy and Hypno show them off as troublemakers with Hypno hypnotizing children and draining the energy of nearby Pokemon, requiring its pre-evolution Drowsy to fix the problems that it caused. Muna and Masharna, on the other hand, seem to be more influenced by the dreams they consume rather than causing trouble themselves. In fact, the mist coming from Masharna's head is said to change shape and color depending on the dreams it consumes, and can even bring people's bad dreams to life. Tapir are a truly incredible species, but sadly, three of the four species are listed as endangered by IUCN, or the International Union for the Conservation of Nature, with the fourth tapir species being listed as vulnerable. Unfortunately, these guys are often hunted for their meat, and in more recent years, have taken some massive hits to their population due to habitat loss. What can you do to help? Well, you may not realize it, but a shocking number of the products we use come from the rainforest that Tapir call home. Some might be obvious, like fruits and veggies, but everything from tissues to materials used in clothing can also have their origins in these regions of the world. The next time you're out shopping, look for this little frog symbol, or logos like it, on the package of the products on the shelf. This symbol is the insignia of the Rainforest Alliance a global organization seeking to encourage the safe and sustainable harvesting of products in the rainforest around the world. What does that mean? It means that when you see this logo on a product, you can be sure it was harvested in a way that was safe for the environment, the local wildlife, and that plenty was left behind for others to use. These logos can be found on everything from bananas to the coffee that you buy in the store. If you'd like to take a small action to help protect these incredible animals, you can start by supporting companies who are following the proper practices and making sure that the homes and habitats of the insane diversity of wildlife found in the world's rainforests are being respected and protected. How's it going guys? I'm an avid herpetologist. Thank you all so much for joining me for this very first episode of a new series I've been planning for a while now animals in gaming. I really hope you guys enjoyed this video concept. I've got plenty more of these episodes already lined up and ready to go. If you guys did enjoy the video, please feel free to like and subscribe and hey, leave a comment down below if you guys have any other questions about tapirs or have other animals that you'd like to see me cover in future episodes. As always, thank you all so much for joining me. As again, I am an avid herpetologist. Hope you all have a great rest of your night and I will see you all next time.